people uh, know him here in Ghana uh, because we've seen videos of him and some celebrities that we are familiar with, others we are not familiar with. Uh, but we know that he's doing some great job out there and I've seen that in a lot of his videos he tries uh, to promote play Ghanaian tunes in his shop and vibe to them. He's in Ghana, he's Ghanaian for those who didn't know, uh, people call him Nikki. We get to find out his real name. We'll find out some more about, you know, the reason he decides to always play the Ghanaian tunes, why he's hyping our artists and what work is like out there for him and is he only a celebrity barber does he barb other people we we'll get to know in this conversation that i'm about to have with yours truly always promoting ghana it's good to have you back home again thank you because you're always here i hear yeah kind of like i see i've been coming these days <laughs> you've been coming these days eh i see so it means that work is popping for you i want to say it like that because um when you have the means to come or you have the reason to come, nothing should, nothing should stop you. I've heard stories about how you've become a big brown out there. Um, yeah, believe it or not, God has done it. And so we, we started from a humble beginning. It was hard initially. And I didn't know that barbering is that kind of like heavy duty skill until I went to London. And so when I when I got to London, I, did, I, did, I, saw, I saw how Barbering can put you on the next level and then I jump on it. Did you train here as a barber or you just chanced on it or it was a gift from God? You realized that you could barb. How did that all happen for you? 100% gift from God. It all started from one time when me and my friends were chilling in our house. I mean, when I was in Ghana. And then one of us, one of, the, one of our friends, he usually goes to the barber shop. We save and go to the barber shop and get his hair cut. Because back in the days, it's, it's expensive to go to the barber shop. And so we were playing outside and he, he came whilst we were playing. And then he said, oh, you guys, I just had my hair cut, you know. And I looked at him and said, no, your hair cut doesn't look, <laughs> doesn't look like you just had your hair cut. I can even do better than that. And then everybody started laughing. So because he's older than us, he said, why are you guys mocking me? Like. If you can do it, come and do it. If you're not able to do it, I'm gonna beat you up. So he actually challenged me and I rushed quickly inside to the house and got my blade and my comb because them days we didn't have no clippers. There was clippers, but you know, you couldn't afford it. So I chanced to grab a blade and a comb. I didn't even, I can't even remember where I got that from, but I, I had a feeling because, um, I always have a feeling that I can I can I can bop, I can cut someone's hair, but I've never tried it. And so that if you if you remember back in the days there was this comb with blade. You slide the blade in there and you cover it. Yeah. I went and grabbed that quickly with my some old scissors, you know them scissors that our parents used to cut materials. Yeah, that I I ran quickly to the guy and I sat him down. And trust me, it was the best haircut I've ever done in my life. Yeah. Yeah, from then, I decided to, I mean, cut people's hair. And I was in, inviting people to cut them free, and then that's how I start building. Like, even school time, I don't go to school properly. I went to Laboni anyway, so. <laughs> and the seniors in the school, I was a day student. They, I also went around the senior side, where the, where the borders are and I realized that someone is having a haircut. And then I said to myself that they're not doing the right thing. As I told the guy that I can, I, can, I can help. He said, oh, if you can cut hair, then come and help. So I took the, the comb and the scissors from the blade for the guy. And then that also changed. The whole school got to know about me, like, oh, he's a barber, he's a good barber. He's... And then me being a day student, the senior asked me to come, to come and lodge in the in the uh, boarding house. So I was a day student, but I was a boarding student as well. So I had my staff, my suitcase and everything in the boarding house. There was no one that taught me, or oh, do this or do that. There was nobody. It's like, you see, the, with barbering, the more you do it, the more you upgrade yourself. Same things, I have to push myself. I remember that the first design I did in someone's hair was like um, um, spider web. 
and that is not a joke thing. When I was doing it, people were there, they were watching me, they said, oh, how are you going to do this? But I had a paper, and I was watching the paper, and we're watching what I was doing, and I was, and you see, with a haircut, you can you can do mistake and then go get erase and erase it. So you must be actually yeah accurate in what you're doing. And I did it. So from when I, I challenged my inner me, I realized that oh, everything is possible. So you left the shores of Ghana, knowing very well that you're going to ply a trade in Babin out there, uh, or you you thought that you're just going to seek greener pastures or you're going to school. What, what, what was the intent when you were leaving? Believe it or not, like, even when I was leaving Ghana, the, the, la, the last day of me leaving Ghana, I made a statement to my mom. I said to my mom, here yeah, at the airport, that, mom, you know, you always tell me to go to school. You want me to be a lawyer. But me, me I'm not good in class. Like, I, I hate maths. Like, I, I'll just... I just feel like fainting anytime I see my maths teacher. Because I'm not good in calculations. So whilst I'm in the class, I'll be thinking of the barber shop. And then I said to myself that that's not working for me. I'm only good with the with the with the clippers and the, what do you call it? And the comb. So I might as well do my PhD in, in cutting hair. So it got to a time I go to school Monday, Tuesday. I don't go Wednesday and Thursday, I go to the barber shop. I go Wednesday and Thursday in the barber shop, then Friday I go to school. So everybody realized that that's what I do. And then they start punishing me in school and everything. But this is what happened. All that helped me, I put my all in my work. And I promised my mom, I remember, I told my mom that, Mom, you know what, I'm going to go to London, go be one of the best barbers in the world, and I'm going to build a house and through the same barber, and she was crying, but she was laughing. She said, you keep doing, saying all these things. Like, it came to pass. How challenging or difficult was it for you when you went there? Mm, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, it was a big challenge when I, when I first got to UK. Because obviously, when you, when you go to UK, the first thing is get like a part-time job where you can pay your bills and, you know, like cleaning job or like go to the washing washing bay and help people but i knew i knew that i could never do nothing better than cutting people's hair and so i went straight to the barber shop but this is the challenge when i went to the barber shop the people i met in the shop they were they were hard working and super super good barbers i don't mean just normal barbers super super class barbers there was a guy in the shop that can cut someone's hair in six minutes i mean a full haircut so these people, if you're working with them, you need to be on top to be able to match them. So it was hard for me initially. My first pay in the, sh in the shop was 24 pounds. And out of the 24 pounds, I need to buy a bus pass. I need to pay, I was living with my cousin. I need to chip in like, you know, when it comes to food and that, I need to pay for. And so when they paid me my first pay, I went to the toilet and I started crying. It was a challenge for me, like I couldn't, and then I decided to go to the army. But then again, something happened. I had a chicken pox on the day of me going, going, not graduating into the army, but going proper, proper, and put my name down that, oh, I want to be in the army. I had a chicken pox. Out there? Yeah, out there. In two weeks, my chicken pox went, and then I went back. The badge that's supposed to go with me, they're gone already, so. So I came to the barber shop and I started grafting. And I said, you know what? I know God wants me to be a barber, so I have to do it from the shop. And so I realized the people come to work between 9 and 10. I decided to start working at 6 in the morning. So by the time they come, I've done like four, five, six people. You know, it started like that, and the people started getting to know me. And then another thing about London is if nobody knows you as a barber, they don't see you on your chair. They must, they must be a witness of something that you've done. For them to have the confidence come and see you on the chair. They don't people in London, I don't know about Ghana, but people in London don't play with their haircut. No, they don't joke with it. You can't even do no try and error with, with your haircut in London. I even realized that people would rather give the clippers to their friends to cut their hair rather than giving it to the barber they, they've never seen before. That's how much they take their hair, serious. So, so at what point did you get your breakthrough then? At what point 
during the hustle in London did you finally say, look, this is it. I got in what I was looking for. This is what I promised Mama is about happening. Okay. Along the line, um, I happened to cut one guy's hair and the guy is related to ex-Nigerian player called Yakubu Ayibeni. So this guy, them days, um, he used to play for Everton in the Premiership. So after cutting the guy's hair, he loved his haircut and then he said he's going to tell Yakubu, which is his best friend, so that I will be cutting his hair for him because he doesn't like the way Yakubu's haircut is. So I was in the shop one time and they called me that they're coming. So I should lock the, lock the shop, bring the shutters down. I thought they were joking. So randomly, this guy is here, was in the shop. They said, oh, that's Yakubu, he won his haircut. I see so many people with, you know, them paparazzi. <laughs> they have their t-shirts to be, to be signed, football to sign. They don't, and they don't play with England, they don't play with footballers, especially premiership pre players. So there were so many people and I said, oh my God, this is my day. Everybody was looking at me, there's so much, big, big tension. So he sat on my chair and trust me, that was my breakthrough. I gave him the best haircut of my life. And so from there, he started telling people and then the news started spreading. But what made it worse is BBC contacted me because, I mean, they saw my, my, my work through social media and then they emailed me one time. They said, they see that um, I got kind of like links with footballers, so many footballers. And they, know, they want to know what the chemistry is like. What is the secret? And I told them, it's the passion I put in work. And so they vibe with me because of the passion I put in work. And they said, congratulations, but we are watching you, we are BBC. Okay, so I said, wow, that's nice. And then one time randomly, they called me. They said, I need to come to the office. And I went and they spoke to me. They asked me so many questions like, and they said, they have to do an interview of me. I said, wow, they've never done an interview of no Baba since BBC came into existence. So I said to God that, oh, this is what you made me, God. I'm ready. And they told me exactly how it's going to be. We're going to go to the footballers, some of the footballers' house. So I should speak to them. They, they asked me if they're comfortable with me coming to their house. I said, that is pattern. That is easy. So I called like, a player in Crystal Palace with Zaha, I called him, I said, my guy, this is what's happening. He said, that is good news. My house is open for you anytime, any day. I call a next guy, call Bakari Sako. He, used to, he also plays for, them times he also played for um, Crystal Palace. He, he was overexcited to hear that from me because he said he lost me so much. So his, his house, is, his door is forever open. And I call another guy again. So everybody kind of like, oh yeah. So it became like, I didn't even know who to choose. So I look at the, the ones that are immediate or close to me, and then I deal with them. From that day till now, God has been so good to me, like, it's amazing. That's the big deal, my friend. Breaking the rules. Bim! Did you hear that, you? Oh!